for a moment. So, I've got, we're trying it out here as far as the microphone. There you go. Now, I, yesterday I received from UPS the Gibson SG and uh, from Tony Iommi. It is autographed by him. It was designed by him. Uh, it's to his specifications of what he plays on stage. And so uh, I promised months ago when this project started out that Tom would be the first person to play it when I got it. And lo and behold, there he is. <laughs> times and writing the op-eds and you were screaming and hollering at him over your cup of joe there at the table. Never did you know that as a member of the Songwriters Hall of Fame See, that's how you, the kids don't want to get up for school. Oh, the hell with that. Watch this. Watch what dad pulls off right here, you know? Chocolate, so, you stay out of there. All right, no chocolate. Right, no chocolate. She moved. Chocolate actually moved from her usual resting spot and going, oh, hey, dad's playing guitar again. <laughs> take their toys to the office and go, well, so much for getting any work done today. It's like, I could have sworn we did. Towns, Carl Anthony Towns scored 60 points. All right, here, okay, you're going to provide the stingers. All right, have a seat, man. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna provide the stingers to the horrific news of what happens uh, as, I, as I give headlines, all right? Let's, let's okay. try this out. Uh, yeah, okay, so here we go. Last night, the San Antonio Spurs took one on the chin to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Final score... Final score, Minnesota 149, Spurs 139. Give me a riff. There you go. Let's do some blues here, all right? Okay. 
Carl Anthony Towns goes and drops 60 points on the Spurs. <laughs> highest scoring points of the entire season. He scored more points than uh, LeBron, you know, who is all proud of his 56. Yeah, 56, right? Yeah, okay. No. I'm so happy that happened against my Spurs. Thank you very much. There you go. Yeah, I, 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 I may have made a mistake. I may have made a mistake, Mike. I don't know if I'm going to get my guitar back. This is my problem. <laughs> I know, it's like, okay, next next scene uh, at Surf Club, Tom's going to be over there for open mic going, well, I'm here with my new guitar. It's like, and Pudge is like, <laughs> you know, I'm going to be holding Tom's cord is what I'm, oh, no, I know, it's like, I could have sworn I had an SG here just a second ago. And so, uh, well, what do you think, Tom? What do you, what do you think of her? I'm feeling so bad for the Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> comfortable with that guitar, hadn't he, you know? So, all right. Well, there you go. It's broken. It's actually, it's kind of like when you break the champagne bottle on the bow of the ship, you know? Now it can go set to sea. And so, uh, I don't even know what my first, uh, well, you know what, my first riff, I need to play Iron Man. Yeah. I need yeah. to play Iron Man. Definitely. Man. Yeah, no, definitely. In honor of it being the Tony Iommi signature yeah. uh, SG, you know, so. All right. Well, thank you, Tom, for, for doing that for me, and Congratulations. And, and, and I mean, you didn't even go and do the switches yet over here. No, can, I didn't. No, yeah, you can. What is the humbucker? You know, it was the two of them, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just switched back to the uh, this pickup here. Yeah, the back one? Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. Have a seat, Tom. Get a hold of, you. Get a hold of yourself. <laughs> Damn it, Jim! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I, we, we, we lost Tom. We lost him. You know, Tom was never to be seen again. He's going to be up in Maine all of a sudden going, I'm going to, I'm going to, anybody see my guitar? Yeah, it's over there in, uh, in Maine somehow. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, but that, what a sweet ride that is. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't get home quick enough today. <laughs> you know? No, I'm going to play while we're in commercial. I'll, I'll, I'll try it. Yeah. Yeah, I got I to gotta do my obligatory uh, Iron Man. It's an easy riff. I mean, and that's the thing. You find out that these guys, you know, like like Clapton and Eddie and all them, uh, Keith Richards, you actually find out that what they did, it wasn't that hard. If you can find one note, the rest of the notes are... Because these guys were so drunk and so high that if they were going to perform these songs on stage, they had to keep it simple. They couldn't, you know, you know I mean, you get your Steve Vai, I get that where his virtuosity is like, you know, all over the place. But I mean, for the most part, if you if you look at your classic rock, you know your basic classic rock tunes, just find one note, and literally by moving your ring finger up a string or down a string, all of a sudden it's like, wow, I'm playing slow ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well there it is. Uh, but yeah, that was, um, you know, the San Antonio Spurs used to hang their hat on being a defensive squad. I mean, that was the whole franchise was we were, you know. As goes our defense, so goes our, our NBA championships. But, well, not only that, but there's no defense in the San Antonio Spurs organization right now. I mean, because it's bad enough that Carl Anthony Towns goes and drops 60, but realize we allowed Minnesota one point away from 150 points. But here's the crazy part, okay? If you're looking for that silver lining, with Carl Anthony Towns dropping 60 on the Spurs last night, we still scored 139 points and only lost by 10. You would think if a guy's dropping 60 on you, you're losing by like 30 points or something like that, right? I mean, if Steph Curry was to do that, it's a blowout, right? Okay, 149-139 is not a blowout. That, that's, that's three trips up to court, you know, right? That's an all-star game. Yeah, no kidding, right? 
But, and that's what, you know, he's not the first one. We've had, uh, what was it, John Morant? He went off on us. Um, something like that, yeah. And then there was another guy, I forget. Yeah, I mean, several guys this season on the Spurs have had their, hey, it's my career high. I was like, hey, you're welcome, you know. But, uh, well, that is that. Now, there is no NBA action with regards to the Lone Star State today. Okay, and that's because, well, A&M Corpus Christi's playing. So we got to, you know, we got to let that happen, right? So all of our attention is going to be on that as they take on Texas Southern uh, later on this afternoon. 540 is tip-off time. It'll be on True TV. And it, it'll be uh, the, basically the Corpus Christi Islanders. Hey, we're kicking off March Madness. We're the first game, all right? Uh, but the Lone Star teams, the Dallas Mavericks, the Houston Rockets, the San Antonio Spurs, they'll be back at it tomorrow on Wednesday, okay? Uh, Dallas will be in New York taking on Brooklyn. Houston will be hosting Phoenix. Yikes. But you know what? That's a perfect setup game right there. Phoenix, they're like, you know, they're the number one seed in the Western Conference. They're there going, really? We're going to Houston? You know, here's, we're going to play the last place team in the, uh, in the Western Conference? All right, well, there's a W. Yeah, that's a perfect setup for the Houston Rockets to go off on them. And then the San Antonio Spurs will try to bounce back as they take on Oklahoma City in San Antonio. And uh, that game will be at 7.30. But that's all on Wednesday, okay? So today, no Texas teams playing other than our beloved Texas A&M Corpus Christi Islanders. Men's basketball team. All right? So we got that. Okay. Um, there's one situation that I, I... We went through two years, Tom, of dealing with COVID. Two years. Two solid years of this whole uh, vaccination, uh, boosters, mm -hmm. uh, all of us kind of looking down the bridge of our nose at each other, you know, in, a, in weird ways of whether, you know, based upon whether you got a vaccination or not. Mm -hmm. For those of us that got vaccinated, we looked down our nose at those that didn't. Right. For those that did not get vaccinated, they looked down their nose at us that did. Right. And and we had enough vitriol between all sides involved, all parties involved to fill up a room. Right. And to a person around, at least here in the United States, um, if you, whatever your your position on whether you should get vaccinated or not, man, you dug your heels in. And that, that was your belief system. Like you and I, we believed in getting vaccinated. That's us. I got I, I got covid. I'm of the belief that the reason why I did not get hospitalized is because I had been double vaxxed. I got the booster. Uh, I am uh, immune immunity compromised because I'm a diabetic. I had double pneumonia three years ago. So my lungs are all scarred up from that. Uh, so I'm a poster child. Of, I should be in a hospital room with a ventilator clinging, up, clinging to life, right? Barely. But I feel that because I was vaccinated and because I was boosted, I'm here. You know, I, actually, I had minimal, minimal any uh, symptoms in that week that I had the, the COVID, and, and and that's how I feel. A now, mild cold. Right. Yeah. Just a basic head cold. Right. That lasted four days. On Monday, it yeah. was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But by Friday, hey! it was like. Wee! Wee! Yeah, right? We're back. Okay. Now, on the flip side, you had people that never were vaccinated. Needless to say, they never got boosted. Um, and they never got COVID. And so they're looking at, the, you know, at the people that are all about vaccinations and boosters and going, what's your problem? Look, you know, it's all, you know, and, and, they, and they even went, some of them went to the full extreme and where it was a hoax. Uh, some people felt it was the government trying to put a microchip in you so they could follow you. You know, so, I mean, like I said, we covered the entire array, the entire gamut, the entire spectrum of a belief system one way or the other. There was nobody in the country that was like, I don't care, take it or leave it, whatever. No, everybody had an opinion. Everybody. Okay. Now we take it in the world of sport. The world of sport, they're trying to figure out how in the world during a pandemic do we get a season in of our said product. Well, the NBA goes and creates a bubble. When it started out, they took everybody to Disney World, locked them up in a hotel room, had a couple of gymnasiums set up, no fans, 
No, you know, oh, necessary personnel only. You know, it was basically the players and the coaches. That was it. Get your own. How did that work out? Well, the Los Angeles Lakers got themselves a uh, an NBA title that, that nobody saw. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, you know, we saw it on TV with some piped in fake crowd noise, but you know, it was just our way of you know we were making it up as we go. Right? Well. All of these major leagues, whether it was Major League Baseball, whether it was the NBA, whether it was the NFL, whether it was college football, they all had to come up with their own policies of how are we going to maneuver our way through these landmines? How are we going to get a season in without an entire franchise just all getting COVID and some of these players dying from it? How are we going to get the fans to be able to watch these games? How are, are we going to let them into the stadium? And if so, how many? And, you, know, you know, it's an outdoor stadium, but we still need to keep them six feet distance. Remember that one? You've got to keep your distance from each other and all this kind of... So, and, and while that's happening and, and the decision makers are coming up with their solutions on how to deal with this in real time, having never d- dealt with this before, uh, you also had, once again, the other side of the spectrum, making fun of the leagues, making fun of the decision makers, going, are you guys serious? Everybody, you know, let's pack 70000 at the big house and let's watch Michigan take on Ohio State. What's the big deal here? This is stupid. And, you know, so it was the complete opposite, right, of a belief system. And once again, everybody dug their heels in, and this is their belief. Well, now here we find ourselves about two and a half years later, Right, and it's, as we're starting to find out once again in real time, um, it looks like we're 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 now getting out of the pandemic. It's becoming endemic, and to hear some of the the decision makers are going, okay, we've seen the worst of this. A little by we're starting to come out of this, and we're hey, you know what? We can start hanging out again. I mean, yesterday, Monday Night Madness, I had fourteen teams show up, Tom. And I think part of it was because, you know, people are ready to get outside. They're ready to just live life once again. We've been through the, you know, the darkness of this pandemic. And people are just ready to embrace life once again. Get outside and do something, right? In the world of sport, as far as in the big leagues, it's the same thing. The Super Bowl was packed, right? The NBA arenas are packed. We'll see Major League Baseball. They're going to start here in a couple of weeks, and we're going to see opening day, and the stadiums are going to be packed, right? Okay. And we're seeing now that the governments of each state, both on a state level, a city level, a county level, a federal level, they're now starting to ease up on their policies. They're starting to ease up on the restrictions. They're starting to ease up in in, in being hardcore of as far as everybody have you know, hey, keep your distance and wear a mask. The mask mandates are starting to wind down. In New York City. In New York City, yeah. Well, okay, and, and you have, you know, we're dealing now with the schools, you know. What do we do with the children? Because they never got vaccinated. Some people are still skittish, you know. President Obama, uh, you know, we're all over here thinking, hey, you know, we, we made it. And, it. and then we find out this weekend he comes out and says, "Yeah, I have COVID." So people are people are still getting COVID. People, people are still dying from COVID. That hasn't yeah. stopped, right? Okay, no, okay. So I mean, all of these different moving parts are still in place, but somewhere in the 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 hysteria, the dramatics, the concerns, some rightfully placed, some a little, like I said, a little hysterical, but. Bottom line is, all of that is now starting to dwindle down. And some of the policies are starting to be removed. We still got a little bit of COVID, but you know what? We're we're starting to be able to go outside and play. The movie theaters, Batman, $128 million opening weekend. You know, you had an option, you know, and, and people went to the movie theater. They're sitting next to each other, eating their popcorn, drinking their sodas, watching the movies collectively without a mask. At some point, without you know, throughout all of that hysteria, there's this little thing that, you, that always has to come into play. And sometimes it gets lost. And that is something called common sense. Common sense kicks in. And where, you know, you had your, your people that were all about their civil liberties. And, then, you know, their idea was, hey, I should be able to make up my own mind. I, can, I should be able to make up my own decision on how I want to deal with this. The rub about that whole 
concept was that, yeah, but your decision process could affect the life of somebody else. It's fine, you know, you do you, but understand something, the decision you make might actually cause that person to die. So now it's not a you decision, it's a we decision. So that's where it gets complicated. That's where it gets convoluted. Well, in the state of New York, they, you know, in the city of New York City, they really had some issues there. I mean, first of all, that's where it started. That's where it came into the United States was through New York and through LA, right? And New York City, I mean, I don't know if you've ever traveled to New York City, but there's 8 million people on a 12 mile island known as Manhattan. And they're all piled on top of each other. And there's always the hustle and bustle and the noise and the, the traffic and, the, you know, just, you know, ah, you know, all sorts of stuff. New York City came to a halt. It shut down. The biggest city in the world, well, aside from Tokyo, but I mean, definitely here in the United States, you know, the landmark city of our country, the, the, the face of our country, it shut down. My sister was there in Manhattan when it all happened. Uh, she got in a car and drove home. You know, and, 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 and it really messed with her, you know, the, the, to see New York City shut down like that. Well, that affected the, the decision making of something as simple as playing an NBA basketball game. You have the New York Knicks, you have the Brooklyn Nets, and they're trying to play their games. But wait a minute, there's policies, there's rules in place, there's mandates in place. And one of those is that you need to be vaccinated if you're going to partake. And so, so much so they have a brand new mayor. I think his name's Adams. Uh, they're in New York City. And he actually fired 1,000 employees that refused to get vaccinated. They had a certain deadline. Get vaccinated or you're out of a gig. Well, 1,000 people said, up yours. And so now they're out of a gig. So he kind of, you know put his foot down and said, this, these are the rules. I know that we're easing up on, on our policies and so forth. And he even said, okay, you know what? We can go ahead and go to restaurants. We can go into closed theaters. We can even go to arenas. And now we can start watching the games. But if you're an employee of the state, of the city, you need to be vaccinated. And that's where the common sense part is kind of getting weird. Because now we look at Kyrie Irving. Now, Kyrie Irving has been a lightning rod throughout this whole deal because he has refused to get vaccinated. And in doing so, and because of the rules that were play in place in New York City, he could not play home games there in Brooklyn at the Barclays Center. Now, when the Nets would go on the road, Kyrie Irving can play. He can play in San Antonio. He can play in Los Angeles. He can play, he can play everywhere. He just can't play in his home gym, right? So this past weekend on Sunday, the Brooklyn Nets were playing their game. And because they were in Brooklyn, Kyrie Irving couldn't play. But he, he did something that kind of sent a message to what is now becoming just this confusing thing. And he, so much so that Kevin Durant and LeBron James even chimed in about it. And that was that he actually paid as a customer to go to the game. He had court signed seats. And so he goes, as a customer, he was able, not vaccinated, to go into the Barclays Center, sit down, have a beverage, sit courtside, unvaccinated, and watch his team play a game. Yet just if he had scooted his butt about three seats over, and now he's part of the team, he couldn't be there because of the rules. Well, at halftime, he gets up from his seat and he went to the locker room. He went into the locker room of the Brooklyn Nets, did the hang for halftime, and then when halftime was over, he came back to his seat. Well, the NBA found out about that. So yesterday, the NBA fined the Brooklyn Nets $50,000 for allowing Kyrie Irving to go into the locker room. That will learn them. I know, I know, right? It's like, here, hang on a second. I got a couple, I got a couple of quarters in my pocket here. Right, yeah. Let me look under the caps. Yeah, see if I can, in the seat cushions. And that is where the confusion came in. Because Kyrie Irving was basically making a point. And as much of a vaccination guy as I am, and as much of a booster guy that I am, I'm also a common sense guy. And 
I kind of side with Kyrie Irving on this one. Not kind of, I do. I get it. Because why is it that he's a, he paid money, probably like a couple of thousand dollars, mind you, but once again, yeah, for him, no big deal, but right. a couple of thousand dollars as a paying customer, he went and sat as a, as a fan. Unvaccinated, no mask, person to the right of him, person to the left of him. Not a problem. The people sitting next to him, they knew he's not vaccinated. Nobody left, right? He's breathing all over them. Not a problem. Nobody has a problem. He's able, he's breathing the same air that his teammates just a couple of seats over are doing. He's breathing the same air that the referees are, are breathing because he's courtside. He's right there on the court. But as soon as he went in the locker room, he no longer was a fan. And now he crossed the line into employment, of being an employee of the team. And because of that, now all of a sudden there's a $50,000 fine. Is there anything in the CBA about that? Well, no. Well, I mean, I guess because they had to, once again, it was in real time. They were having to make these policies and these decisions as in no time to, well, what if this? You know, to think of all sorts of different possibilities of, well, but what if this happens? Or what if that happens? It was just, you know, in real time, it doesn't wait for you. You got to make, you know, right here, let's make a choice. Let's make a decision right now. Well, in, in, in the side of error and the side of caution, I guess, it was, okay, you know what? You got to wear a mask and you, and you have to be vaccinated, right? And so, and if you're not vaccinated, you can't play, Holmes, especially here in New York City, because we have our rules here. But that's where, okay, Left, side, left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. How in the world can you have a rule that says you have to be vaccinated or you can't hang out? But yet, the person standing next to you who be, only because they're a customer, not an employee, he's not vaccinated? Not a problem. Come on in, man. Have a, hey, you know what? What do you want to drink? We'll get it for you. We'll deliver it to your seat. And we'll breathe your air. We'll have a great time. It's like the same thing with you know restaurants. It never made sense. We're all ah, about restaurants, but as soon as you sat at your ta- at your table, you can remove your mask. Mm-hmm. You know the yeah. the waiter is standing next to you, taking your order, all masked up. You're sitting there with no mask, with a shield all around you, and that's okay because well, you're eating. Meaning what? If I'm eating, that the germs aren't flying around all of a sudden. I don't, you know, it, the common sense is what was lost in this whole deal. And so that's what you're dealing with with Kyrie Irving. And it's putting the mayor of New York City kind of in a, in a tough spot because he can't look like he's making a, an exception for Kyrie Irving. So the only way Kyrie Irving and the Brooklyn Nets no longer get fined and Kyrie Irving gets allowed to play is that the mayor of New York City has to change the rules. But if he changes the rules, what happens to those 1,000 employees he just fired? Now, all of a sudden, they've got a grievance. Now, all of a sudden, they've got a lawsuit. Now, you know, once there's no easy answer here. He can't do a shortcut going, well, okay, you know, eventually we're going to clear up this, this policy here, and we're going to let everybody hang here, whether you're vaccinated or not. But uh, we're going to have to let due process take place here. We can't just do it, you know what, Kyrie, because, you know, well, you're seen every day on TV. Uh, and there's people following you everywhere on ESPN and so forth. Okay, because of that, you're a public figure. We're going to go ahead and let you do it now of what we're going to eventually do a couple of months from now here in New York City. But we're going to let you get a head start. You can't do that. You can't make the exception. So New York City finds itself in a tough spot. And in the meantime, Kyrie Irving is able to kind of poke them in the eye of going, okay, this is stupid. And if we use common sense... Even those of us like myself that are all about vaccination and all about the booster. If I'm being honest, I've got to kind of agree with Kyrie Irving. It's like the old saying, you know, I'm going to clean it up for radio, but hey, crap or get off the pot. You know, what's it going to be? If you're going to allow the fans, you're going to allow 15,000 people into an arena with no masks. You don't know if they're vaccinated or not, and you don't care. And they're all going to hang Sitting next to you, and the way the arenas are built now, those seats are on top of each other. Right. And everybody's blah, blah, breathing all over each other. It's but, a super spreader situation. But these 13 guys right here, just sitting here and wearing shorts, they, apparently they're, I don't know what they, what are you saying? You know, the, the, the COVID is more 
blah with them than it is on the 15,000 people that are in the arena? Once again, common sense. So something, you know, am, am I pointing something out here that isn't eventually going to be addressed? No, I mean, it's going to be addressed. It's just that while we're waiting for it to get addressed and while we're waiting for the bureaucracy to take place, this is just one of those moments where we just kind of look at each other and just shake our head and go, really? You know, one of those types of deals. Anyway, so Kyrie Irving and the Brooklyn Nets, yeah, fine. The Brooklyn Nets really were fined $50,000 because Kyrie Irving went into the locker room unvaccinated. Meanwhile, 15,000 people were in the Barclays Center going, hey, can I get two hot dogs, cotton, ca uh, cotton candy, you know, with no mask. We don't know if they're vaccinated or not. Yeah. Common sense uh, has been removed from that situation. Yeah. All right. Let's take a pause to the cause. Halftime report with Pudge back after this. All right. My turn with the guitar. <laughs> okay. Hey, it's a beautiful sunrise, kids. Enjoy yourself. Have a good one. Peace.